welcome to The Cutting Table. This is the very first of our new series of expert interview videos included in each issue. So of course, we wanted to start with Susie herself and our issue focused entirely on introducing you to The Cutting Table. Susie Williams is the founder of Susie Quilts, a quilt pattern company, blog, and digital zine publisher known for a deep love for the heritage and tradition of quilting and a desire to craft unique contemporary textiles. Since the founding of Susie Quilts in 2015, Susie has published over 60 quilt patterns and over 400 blog tutorials and articles, growing a loyal and enthusiastic fan base along the way. In 2023, Susie launched a new digital zine called The Cutting Table, which is why we're here today. She serves as the publication's editor-in-chief. In August 2023, her first collection of fabric will be released with Art Gallery Fabrics. Susie lives near Chicago with her husband, John, and two young children, Desi and Joanna. My name is Laura Hopper, and I've had the pleasure of working alongside Susie as the creative operations manager for Susie Quilts for over two years, and I'm also the managing editor of The Cutting Table. I'm thrilled to host this new interview series, beginning with a chat with Susie today about the exciting new offerings of Susie Quilts and how The Cutting Table came to be. Susie, thanks for being here. Well, you know, since we are launching a new thing, I thought maybe I'd show up. (laughs) (laughs) idea. (laughs) This is so exciting. I love these interviews. I love these videos. This, I mean, we're going to get into this, but already I'm just like, I love the cutter table. (laughs) Let's tell everybody about it. Let's start by going back in time. (laughs) Okay. Oh yeah. Let's start by talking about how Susie Quilts has grown over the years. What was Susie Quilts like when you first started? What was the day in your life like in 2015 versus today? (laughs) You know, I was thinking about the time, the first time I said out loud what I wanted to do. And this is actually something I haven't thought about in years. And I don't think I've ever told anybody. I, when I, after I graduated from college, I, um, you know, I lived this really fun, like a ton of roommates, you know, life. I ended up moving on, getting married um, kind of getting, you know, more settled. My, my friends kind of moved away and I was in the market for new friends. You know, it's always hard to find, find new friends. And I found myself in this fantastic book club. I mean, just filled with the smartest, funnest, you know, just like we read great books and we had great conversations and it was just a blast. Okay. And I just thought I'm so lucky. Okay. And I respected the heck out of these women. Okay. And I remember we were sitting around the table and we hadn't started talking about the book yet. And I was saying, um, you know, at the time I was a freelance graphic designer and I was doing that full time and I was working all the time. Okay. And when I wasn't working, I was sewing because that's really what excited me. And I was telling this group of women, I said, you know, I'm just really passionate about quilting. And I just got to find a way to make it modern and approachable and something that's like, I don't know, that people want to do. Would you guys want to do anything like that? And it was just crickets. I mean, they just had no idea what I was talking about. They were like, you want to do quilting for a job? Like you want to make quilts for people like you want to what like no one just got what I was talking about but it planted the seed in my head like okay you got it you got to figure out what it is you want what it is you're doing here and like try you know try to make something that's I don't know that people can 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 understand because I just had this like nebulous idea and the idea was just this quilt it was like quilts you know, and, and, you know, through that, I, I, I kind of just honed in this idea of designing quilts and then through that, it morphed into quilt patterns. And then, you know, social media was the catalyst for getting out there and, and finding something, you know, that was approachable and that, you know, got other people excited. And then this community was built and it was just slowly, slowly brick by brick. Susie quilts was formed and it started off feeling really vulnerable and then a little bit ashamed at like the silly idea I had. But sometimes the silliest ideas, if you let them grow, if you let the, you know, if you nurture them and you, you know, I don't know, 
know. If you don't let the idea die, it, they can just be the coolest things. And, you know, I, once again, I'm jumping ahead, but I feel like the cutting table has, has is, it was like one of those moments again. I've so, if in so many past months of going through, you know, the cutting table and talking about our mission and building content, I have just had these flashbacks of, you know, back in 2015, this, I mean, when I had that idea, it was way before 2015. And it was just like feeling vulnerable, feeling scared, feeling, is this silly? Is anyone going to like this? You know, and, and then just remembering like, Hey, don't listen to that voice. You know, like dreams make the best plans, you know, just one foot in front of the other. And I got you on my team too. So I was like, yeah, of course, we're going to make this happen. Of course, it's going to be awesome. <laughs> well, thank anyway, you. Yeah. Was, you know, you, I can take the, the simplest question and turn it into a super long answer. <laughs> Great. That's what people want. I love that story. I love hearing about that book club. I've never heard that story. And I've worked with you for two over two years. We yeah. talked every day. I haven't oh, heard yeah. that before. Oh, yeah. Surprises. <laughs> yeah. What will it be like in 20 years? <laughs> uh, well, when Suzy Quilts began, what were your hopes for the future of Suzy Quilts? You know, you, you sort of like built this up little by little. Did you have a plan? Like, what did you envision? What is this going to be like in five years? What is this going to be like in 10 years? And did you imagine the team of creative people that are involved with Suzy Quilts now? I definitely early on, I ran into this. Oh my gosh. I, I was definitely caught in this loop of my little business. It was this cute little thing that didn't deserve respect and didn't deserve anyone's time. So I would like, people would ask me, how's your little business? You know, I'd say, oh, you know, it's fine. It's fine. And what about you? You know, quick change of subject. And I definitely over the years, never, ever, ever thought that this was something that could grow. This was something that could include multiple people. This was something that, I mean, could just be what it is today. And I think the reason why I finally let myself see the vision was my husband, John, he caught, he called me out once, you know, my, my brother-in-law, you know, said, you know, how's your, how's your little quilt business? You know, he said it just like that. And it wasn't because he was being mean. It's because he probably heard me call it that. And, and John immediately stepped in and said, it's not little, you know, she's doing this full time. She's really good at it. And just hearing that outside voice, because sometimes our inner voices can be so cruel, right? And that's something we all have to get better at. But just hearing that outside voice say, she's pretty good at it. You know, she's really good at it. It's like, believe it, believe it. <laughs> so anyway, no, I did not, I did not see it. I, I didn't plan. I, you know, I didn't go in with like a five, 10 year plan or a business plan. Um, I, I, I feel like Susie Quilts has grown in a lot of the ways that my quilts grow is that I'm just in the moment. I, each quilt is the most important quilt. The quilt I'm making right now, it's the most important thing. And I think that's one thing that has made Susie Quilts and now the cutting table uh, such a lovely place is that we're just like, we're in the moment that we're in and we are like fully enjoying the things that we are creating now. And we, we plan for the future and we are getting better at planning for the future. And that's where you get really, you know, you're really good at that. Um, but, you know, it's like every single time we see a new tutorial or a new, you know, like, you know, Lydia, our head creative contributor comes out with an, like a new um, DIY, new pictures. We have a, you know, a, a team meeting and we talk about new ideas. It's like, this is the stuff, like, this is the stuff that gets us so excited. I see, you know, like she sends me a new picture just, she texts it to me and I'm like, no, oh, this is the stuff, you know, and this is what gets us so excited. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, what, you know, you've released dozens of cool patterns, literally hundreds of blog posts. What inspired you to take this jump and start the cutting table? I can feel how excited you are about it. I know. <laughs> um, well, I feel like 
you know, we've talked so much about those magical moments around the cutting table of being in a sewing class. Or, you know, for me, I learned to quilt from um, a mentor who just really took me under her wing when I was 15 years old. And it was always, you know, come over to the cutting table. I have something new to show you, you know, come over to the cutting table. Um, we got, I have some new fabric, you know, or spread out your fabric on the cutting table. We're going to look at what you got and, you know, where we should put things and uh, like all the, the magic it happened around the cutting table. And so I think you and me in dreaming and talking about, you know, where can we go? Like, how can we push things? Like, how can we explore? Um, you know, an analogy we keep talking about is like mad scientists, you know, just we ask these questions. Can we do it? Can we make that? Is, is that a thing we can do? Let's try it. Right. Let's do it. Let's try it. You know, and then we brainstorm with each other and we, we come up with a really great idea. And that's what we see as the cutting table, as the magic that happens at the cutting table. Um, but, you know, it's not like the start of Susie Quilts, like I mentioned before, because that was just me, you know, just kind of alone trying to figure things out for a long time. Now I got you. And we also have a team of people. And I feel like I need to introduce you just like you introduced me. And, um, you know, I think a lot of people have slowly gotten to know Laura over the years. But I mean, like, did you know that for 20 years, she has been a museum curator? I mean, like that alone, I mean, the the, the knowledge and the, you know, the, the stuff that you know, it's amazing. And I'm so happy that Sue, the Susie Quilts audience and readers gets to glean from that. In the cutting table, you have already written wonderful articles that I, I don't want to, I, I honestly, I just want to be like, should we just read some articles? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> gotta, gotta save it. Gotta save some stuff. Um, past president of the Chicago Modern Quilt Guild, which is a huge guild. Laura, how big is that? I think we, we've got like over 100 50 members right now, I think. So for a modern guild, it's a, for traditional guild, it's, you know, regular, but for modern guild, it's pretty big. It's, it's huge. It's amazing. <laughs> and it's only growing. I mean, it's always growing. You're the current co-president of the nonprofit the Quilt Alliance. You are, uh, you were, I mean, this is pre Susie Quilts now. So you were associate editor for Quilt Folk Magazine, which is a beautiful magazine. You were a manager at the Craft Industry Alliance, what I think a lot of people are familiar with the Craft Industry Alliance. And you wrote a book. <laughs> you wrote a book called Modern Quilts in the Second City, which is Chicago. People okay. might know. It's here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which is where we both live. Mm -hmm. So yeah. the cutting table is not um, a one person show. The cutting table is a beautiful collaboration of fantastic minds. <laughs> But it's like Power Rangers where we all go like this. Every time we have a meeting, we all go like this. We should now. Can I be the <laughs> With our forces combined. <laughs> Matching rings. Done. It's happening. Yeah. I mean, that's one of the things that I really loved about working at Susie Quilts personally is I, when I started this job, you were looking for somebody to answer customer service emails. Yeah. I had a six month old baby and had taken some time off of work. And I thought, all right, I can, <laughs> I can do some customer service emails. I can get back into to work. Um, she is getting older, uh, we're having some childcare, but you know, it has exploded beyond my dreams too. When I started here, just the amount truly of trust that you put into me as a, uh, I, I feel more like a collaborator with you. Yeah. Like it, now's a good time for me to tell you that you're my emergency contact. <laughs> <laughs> Just not John. <laughs> yeah, I might be more organized. <laughs> you know, my blood type, you know, my cycle. And I'm sure you know. <laughs> I have your full calendar, calendar project management system, which was a new thing <laughs> <that> I did. <laughs> but it's what's great about us as a team, though, is I think that we mesh really well in this way that I have personally, like, I have all these transferable skills that relate to organization, that relate to project management and things like that. And you are like a wild burst of creativity and put them together. And it's just like, we can do 
anything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And really that's the, how the digital zine was born and not just a digital zine. I mean, the word I love to throw in the, you know, on front of that is a living digital zine. Um, because there is a beautiful history of, you know, zines in the quilt world, which I didn't know about, but with your historian background, you told me about so inspiring. So together, you know, we, we thought, well, what about a digital living zine where it's not just past issues that would sit on your shelf, but it's issues that you can still interact with. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, if you are working through a tutorial and you just cannot figure something out, you write a comment, you know, and it's, it's something that I think gets us really excited about um, just growing that, you know, that, that bank of uh, information and creativity, you know, to every month, a new issue is going to drop in that bank, you know, it's just going to keep growing, yeah. And people can reach back as far as they want to. It, it, I, I wrote an article um, that you mentioned. I wrote an article about the history of zines and mm-hmm. I focused on the quilt community. And one of the things that is really challenging is that you just can't f- find the old ones now. I, I was able to find three uh, issues of Quilters Newsletter, which is one of the, the zines that I wrote about on eBay. Um, and that's it (laughs) on the whole internet right now. So, you know, over time, people are always going to be able to have these. They're always going to be able to go back. They're always going to be able to leave a comment too. You know, I can't, if I read one of these old quilt zines from the seventies, I can't really reach out to the person who wrote that article (laughs) Yeah, and say like, can you tell me how to match these points? Right, right. <laughs> it's not gonna work, you know, right. because it's so it's so old. People move. It's you know, it's these zines have long been discontinued. Um, so yeah, it's it's such a good benefit of this structure. Yeah. So we love the comments, not only so we can interact, um, but also you can, uh, as a subscriber, um, reply to a comment. So let's say, you know, Lydia is talking about boxing corners in, um, you know, a quilted bag. Um, You know, she can comment and say, this technique has worked for me. And then someone else can comment and say, this technique has worked for me. And so it really is that interactive, you know, living digital environment. Um, but you know, how is this digital zine different than the blog? You know, Laura, what would you say is a big difference? I mean, I, right now, what people are watching is one big difference, right? Like we want to bring videos to every issue. There's going to be an expert interview in each issue that relates to the issue theme. Um, and that's not something that you get with a print, (laughs) publication you can't it's not like harry potter you just open it up and you can watch it <laughs> you know a video example, a great example <laughs> yeah <laughs> we're not there yet though in our knowledge of magic <laughs> oh i was like where's this oh, okay magic yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um yeah this is this is one of the things that makes me very excited as somebody who i i'm very naturally interested in people i love interviewing people i love um, sharing that with others. Um, I just did another interview today that was, I think people are going to love. Uh, so yeah, that, that is one of the things that excites me. Um, do you want to tell people about the big difference between the blog and the cutting table subscription? Yeah. Yeah. So one thing we, on the blog versus yes. The, so yeah. one thing we love about the Susie Quilts blog is that we, um, we cater it really to people learning to sew, people who are uh, new to quilting, they they might need product reviews, they have questions about which rulers to buy, what fabric should I get, you know, the difference between denim and chambray. These are things that you just kind of learn along the way, and you can learn them on the Suzy Quilts blog. And then with that, you know, we have so many sew alongs because we take those, you know, beginners and we say, okay, let's walk you through a quilt pattern step-by-step from the very beginning, picking fabric all the way to the very end of maybe trimming off the sides or whatever the end of that quilt pattern is. And then from there, okay, so you have this quilt pattern. What else can you do with it? 
So you bought this quilt pattern to make a quilt, but also on the Susie Quilts blog, we want to show you, can you make it into, you know, a, a pillow with an invisible zipper? Can you make it into a quillo? Did you even know what a quillo was? You know, all these different um, applications that you can have for just a single quilt pattern. So that's something that gets us really excited about continually doing, you know, publicly on the Susie Quilts blog. Um, with the cutting table, each issue will have a theme. So each issue will have, you know, a certain amount of content. It will have one single theme that all of that content will be, you know, honed in and focused on. And, um, you know, we'll have that expert interview. We'll have, you know, articles, tutorials. You'll even get a letter from me, <laughs> just kind of talking about the entire theme, why we picked it, um, you know, how each tutorial fits into that theme. Um, so it's it's much more like a magazine that you, you know, might be familiar with, except it's smaller. And so it's like a cute little zine. <laughs> <laughs> it is. And it's really cool to be in that history of quilting zines, right? That, mm -hmm. that this is really how information first started being broadly distributed for, well, there were like newspaper columns, uh, you know, that predated this, but really what happened in the 60s, in 1969, one person said quilters need to know everything about quilting. They need all the latest news. They need to know about quilt history. They need to know uh, how to make different blocks. I am going to make a 16 page publication and mm -hmm. I'm gonna mimeograph it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just going to mail it from my house to anybody who wants it. Like, it's incredible. And this publication, Quilter's Newsletter, grew to have over 200,000 subscribers just in the U.S. alone. And it's shipped to 100 other countries, too, over time, right? But, like, these scrappy origins. There's also a, a really great early quilting zine called Quilter's Journal that you can learn more about in the article that I wrote. And you can read past issues of that um, because they've been digitized by the Quilt Index. Um, so, you know, it is- That through the Quilt Alliance? Uh, yeah, it, it was originally a partnership between the Quilt Alliance and the MSU Museum and now Michigan State University. And now Michigan State University Museum runs the Quilt Alliance. I, I'm sorry, runs <laughs> the um, uh, Quilt Index. The Quilt Index. Okay. Because that sounds like something the Quilt Alliance would be involved in. They, yes, they were at the beginning, but now it's a, a, a project of the Michigan State University Museum. And that is actually the first museum where I worked. So that's where I learned a lot of um, my sort of early knowledge about quilts was from the really amazing people who are super passionate and who've worked there for literally decades because <laughs> they love their job and they love this huge collection of quilts and quilt ephemera like the Quilt Journal uh, mm -hmm. that they have at that museum. So yeah, I mean, it it really excites me to be sort of continuing on in this tradition in a super modern way that aligns so much with what Susie Quilts has always done. Susie Quilts has always been a leader in digital patterns. Susie Quilts has always been a leader in blogging. Susie mm -hmm. Quilts, what are we going to do? We're, we're going to make a digital publication. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it is important for us, at least right now, to keep it digital, not just for ease and getting out, you know, the word and people being able to have access to it. But, you know, also we cut, we don't ship, we don't use plastics, we don't use fuels, get, you know, getting things to you. Um, it, I mean, I don't know about you, but I have stacks of old magazines in a closet that I just, I can't bring myself to get rid of or recycle because I love them, but they just take up space, you know? And sometimes I think, you know, like when I die, they're going to have to just throw all those magazines and books in my, in my grave because I'm like, <laughs> take them with me. I love them. But, you know, they take up space and, you know, like we get so excited just thinking you, you get, on your phone, you can access every issue of every zine, everything on your phone. Mm -hmm. um, you can even watch these interviews on your phone. Yep. Let's go ahead and talk about what people should expect from each of their issues. Okay. Yeah. So um, just the nuts and bolts, is that what you're talking about? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So they're getting so three posts. Mm -hmm. They're getting an expert video interview. Mm -hmm. They're getting a letter, letter from the editor. 
<laughs> um, but one of the things that makes you really excited is all of the extra. Oh, wait, did you mention the book of the month? Oh, book of the month. Yeah. I do that. Yeah, you do that. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell, but Laura's like really into books. I am. <laughs> really into books. She like reads a lot or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, book of the month makes me really excited because it's it's always a sort of fun puzzle for each of the issues that we've done so far to figure out like what is going to be an interesting companion to this, what is going to expand people's inspiration and creativity even more. Um, so some of the books are like beautifully illustrated quilt books, but you're also going to get like very interesting history books, um, with tons of just like deep detailed, uh, information you're going to get, um, a book about organizing that I really like <laughs> that has a lot of different ways to interact with it and read it. So you can even, there's an audio book, so you can listen to it while you're sewing. Yeah. Plus discussion questions at the end. So if you are a member of a super awesome book club, you know, whether that's, you know, one friend that you zoom with or whether that's a whole, you know, group of people, you have some, you know, launching questions that will help you get started. Yes. Yeah. That, that is an important part of it. And, you know, I always dream that everybody's quilt guild is going to have book clubs. <laughs> <laughs> and I, you know, this would be a really great way to start something like that. If you're in a guild or a B and you want to sort of like deepen your relationships with people. I mean, Susie started this conversation talking about a book club that was so meaningful to her. Um, yeah. Yeah. Then, then you've got, you've got all the tools you need in order to, to start that in your community. And if you read it on your own, then you can comment on the discussion questions um, in the post and I'll write you back. <laughs> Laura will be in your book club. <laughs> and you know what? You can also um, connect the Susie Quilts Patterns Facebook group with this. Um, you know, for the most part, that that group um, talks about patterns. But if you just wanted to pop in and say, hey, I read the book, you know, did anybody else read the book? I'm sure, you know, you can connect with that. Um, but, you know, in addition to each issue, we, we wanted to give you more. <laughs> so just for signing up for a subscription to the cutting table, you get a free quilt pattern. So pretty. Um, it's one of my favorites. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's called luminous because we're just like little lightning bugs full of all these creative ideas. Um, also it's actually like, kind of like a lightning bolt. So sometimes I just feel like I'm getting like struck by, <laughs> struck by creativity. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, uh, back to the future. Who is the doc? I'm like doc sometimes. <laughs> like my hair is just all, <laughs> um, that's, that's the origin of luminous, <laughs> the quilt pattern that you get for free. Um, but you know, we get really excited about our partnership discounts. So um, we have handpicked, we have gone out on our own and asked our partners that we trust um, if they would provide subscribers of the cutting table specific discounts, everything from notions and fabric to quilting. So every step of the sewing process, you have a discount. Pretty sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sweet. So, and those, you know, will will constantly be refreshing or you know updating, but you'll always have access to that, and there will always be, um, you know, fifteen or more of them. Mm -hmm. And it's going to help pay for your subscription alone because these yeah. discounts will save you along the entire step of your your process of your journey. Yeah, I mean, pretty easily, um, these discounts will pay for the subscription itself pretty easily. I mean, especially if you buy fabric for one quilt <laughs> and use a coupon, um, right there, your subscription is pretty large. <laughs> so yeah, that's pretty is. sweet. Yeah. yeah. Um, is there, is there anything we're missing? I feel like I've, I've just jumped all over the place because I got like ants in my pants, like so excited about the cutting table. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too. Um, no, I, I, those are, those are really awesome perks. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, should we give viewers a sneak peek of what we got going on in the future? Like future yeah. issues? Oh, yes. Yes. Because one of the things that makes me the most excited about the cutting table is the themes. The idea that what we're presenting each month is cohesive. Everything is the package. Everything goes together. When you read these, um, they all relate to each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
So we've, you know, we've had a lot of, you know, group meetings talking about what makes sense, what themes, you know, excite us. Sometimes we've got, we've like had an amazing article or tutorial and we build a theme around that. Sometimes we pick the theme first and we're like, all right, let's fill it. This theme is just so perfect. So, I mean, some of the themes that one thing that Laura is like really excited about is organization. (laughs) (laughs) Self-care is another theme because I'm a mom with two little kids that just sometimes, whew, (laughs) <laughs> and some help. Um, yeah, I mean, we got we, fabric. That's that's one. That's our issue number two theme. Two, yeah. I think the photography one is going to be really great for people. Article is coming about taking photos of your family and loved ones with quilts, which I oh, like yeah. ideas for how to style them with your family yeah. members. I can't wait for that because I got some family pictures taken and brought a quilt and you like can't even see it in the picture. Yeah, right. (laughs) Because the photographer wants your face. Yeah, they don't know what to do. But, you know, with these ideas, you can show examples when you're getting family photos. I'm very excited for that. Color issue, that's going to be great. Oh, yeah. All about color. And, you know, that's one of the posts in issue number two, a two part series on, you know, picking fabrics because picking fabrics, you know, there's a lot to think about. So we just want to, you know, we want to help you. We want to, we want to help you let this be as fun as possible. And sometimes for a skill to get fun, you have to have a certain level of confidence. And I think that's another thing about the cutting table is we just want you to come to a place where you can feel just really confident. Because when you feel confident, you can play and you can dream because you know there's a sturdy ground below you. So you can jump high. I love that. <laughs> yes. <Yeah>. Thank you. <laughs> That's what we want. That's what we want. A place to sign off and to thank everybody for being here and thank everybody for their excitement over this. Yes. People have been thrilled about this project before they even knew what it was when we just teased it. Um, And that excitement is clearly like buzzing through us too. (laughs) Um, So thanks, Susie. And we're so excited to bring you this new interview series to subscribers. And we'll see you next time in issue two around the cutting table. Yeah, we, I have to say our little catchphrase, Laura. (laughs) Around the cutting table where we can dream, create and play. You know, in so many ways, I was like, is that kind of juvenile or silly? But it's so important to play. And we want to build a place where you can play. Yeah, the quilting playgrounds. (laughs) Quilting playgrounds. (laughs) For real. Oh, you know, the way we talk, this video is going to turn into like an hour and a half long thing. No one is going to stick around long enough for whatever bloopers we talk on the Let's do it again. And if I mess up again, then we'll move on. (laughs) If you mess up again, we'll just quit. We'll not launch the cutting table. <laughs> oh, pressure. <laughs> cut. Take three.